In this lesson, we are going to learn about cations and anions in ionic compounds. Well, first of all, we need to know that ionic compound is made of a cation, always, and followed by an anion. So these are the two components of any ionic compound. Now, what is a cation? We mentioned a cation is the first ion in ionic compound. It is a positively charged ion. So, you look at the T right there, that T kind of indicates to you that a T looks like a symbol of a positive sign. So if you don't remember what a cation is, it is. So if you don't remember what a cation is, think of the letter T that reminds you of the symbol sign, that reminds you of the positive sign. Now, what are the common cations? Remember, the metal monatomic ions on the periodic table, including the hydrogen that has lost electron, those are the cations. Or if we look at polyatomic ions, we have two positive polyatomic ions here, ammonium and hydronium. In order to identify them, you need to know what they are and what they look like. Okay? Then we move on to anions, which is the second ion in an ionic compound, and it is a negatively charged ion. If you don't remember, an anion is a negative. Look at the word anion. See how the n right there? That represents a negative. Okay? So that's how you know anion is negative. And then if we look at some of the common negative charged ions are the non-metals, monatomic ion, which will be on your PT, which is your periodic table, or a hydrogen that has gained one electron. And then we also have hydroxide over here and sulfate. And then we have over here, and also we have some of the common ions that are listed over here. So in order to identify the cations and the anions in an ionic compound, you need to know these polyatomic ions as well as the monoatomic ions on the periodic table. In addition to defining cations and anions, you need to know the structure of the chemical formula. And here is a review of the common structure of a chemical formula. In some chemical formula, they have parentheses that group polyatomic ions when there are more than one. That means if you will only have one polyatomic ions, we don't need to use parentheses. Okay? And then we have the second part, which is a subscript. A subscript, think of the word subway or under, right? See this right here? That number is a subscript, and this is the element symbols right there. This is generic element symbols. So this is a subscript. What is so special about this subscript? Is that it indicates the number of atoms of a specific element. So in this case, it tells you how many of that elements are there in this chemical formula. Or if you have polyatomic ions and there are more than one polyatomic ions you are going to group the polyatomic ions together okay and it will be grouped by this parentheses up here as we mentioned before so keep this in mind as we do some of the example problem below first of all let's look at this example we know that the first ion is the cation and we realize that this is aluminum in group 3a on the periodic table okay so therefore this whole entire thing right here is your cation which is aluminum but how many do we have how many aluminum do we have see that subscript right there that's subscript 2 remember subscript indicate the number of atom of a specific element that tell you there are two of aluminum okay and now we know the charge for aluminum is is Al3 plus because it's in group 3A. So therefore, this compound has two cations of aluminum 3 plus. Okay, and then next to the cation or the remainder of the formula, the first ion is a cation. The second one must be your anion. So we know oxygen must be the anion. And we also know that oxygen is a monatomic ion on the periodic table in group 6A, and it has a charge of 2 minus. Now look at this subscript right there. That subscript tells you there are 3 oxygen. Okay, so in this case, 
we can say that this compound N has three anions of oxygen two minus. And this is how you interpret or identify the cations and anions. Let's do another example. In this case, we involve parentheses and polyatomic ions. Again, the first part is the cation, and we recognize this is the monatomic ion magnesium on the periodic table, which is in group 2A, so it has a plus 2 charge. So in this case, that subscript 3 right there indicates that it has 3 magnesium. So we can say that this chemical formula has 3 cations, because we know magnesium is 2 plus, and it's a metal, so three cations of Mg2+. That 2 plus is because it's from group 2A. Then of course the rest is going to be your anion. Now they make it even easier for you because they group the anions or the polyatomic ions that are negative charge with a parenthesis. So in this case, do we care about this 4 at all? That 4 tell you there are 4 of oxygen, right? But this 4 belong to the polyatomic ions already. So we are looking for the ions. We're not looking for specific number of atoms of each element that will be covered later on. So therefore we are focusing on this number 2 right there. See right there? Because this 4 is already part of the phosphor. Because this 4 right here is part of the whole entire ions called phosphate. We are looking for how many of the cations and anions. In this case, we're looking at this two. That two tell you that there are two of the phosphate. So we can say N has two anions of PO4. And we can look that it is three minus. There you go. Now let's look at another example where we involve another polyatomic ions, but the parentheses does not exist. First of all, we know barium. Barium is a metal in group 2A. And we know, hey, if it's a metal monatomic ion, it has to be a cation. So therefore, this barium is your cation in 2A, so it has 2 plus, right? And then we know, so this is the start, so it has how many? It doesn't have a subscript, so we know it's going to be 1. Every time you don't see a subscript, we assume it's going to be one. So it has one cation, okay? And in this case, it's a cation of barium in group 2A, so it's barium 2 plus. But what about the SO4? Going back to our structure of the ionic compound, if the first is cation, the remainder is your anion. Notice how we have SO4 and there's no parenthesis, right? That SO4 right there, or the remainder of it, this whole entire thing will be your negative ions or your anions. But if you don't recognize that this is a polyatomic ions, you can actually double check over here. Look for SO4. Where is it? It is right here. So right there, SO4 is your sulfate. So that is one way we can double check that we are on the right track. So in this case, how many sulfate do we have? Since there are no parentheses to group, this polyatomic ion together. That means there is only one of this. We can continue and say N has one N ion of SO4, two minus. So the key part again is that you have to be able to recognize the polyatomic ions as soon as possible, or else you will confuse yourself with a lot of the elements that's involved in the polyatomic ions. Let's do another tricky example where we're going to use the same polyatomic ions because I want you to realize that polyatomic ions does not necessarily group by a parenthesis. In most cases, it will not have a parenthesis because it only has one of that polyatomic ions. For instance, look at this one. We know that hey, right away, Na is a metal in group 1A. So it is your cation. So we can say that it has two cations, cation of Na+, plus because sodium Na is in group 1A, and 
we just mentioned before, sulfate is a polyatomic ion. So therefore, how many do we have? There's no parenthesis, and we know it's going to be one. And it has one anion of SO4, 2 minus. And that's how you identify the cations and anions in ionic compound. But again, the hardest part is to realize that we have a list of negative polyatomic ions and each one of them has a unique chemical formula.